Hello everyone. Welcome. Hey Kalos. How's it going? Uh, feeling pretty good after your win, I imagine? I would think so. Well, we are in. Roll to one. Yours, play yours first. Awesome. I am ready to go. Hey, Kvectra, welcome. Awesome, yeah, we're playing. So we're doing some. We're doing some doppelin. We are doing some doppelin. And it seems like my camera is a little bit laggy on my end, or it looks like it's a little bit laggy on the stream end. So I apologize if it is laggy. Yeah, it was really nice to play. I always appreciate. I always like playing you, Kalos. Always, always like playing you. That uh, sounds good. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, exactly, Kalos. That is exactly it. Deck 57. That's for me to play? Just want to check. I think this is their Seabringer Kokoas, right? Which one is Yvonne? Okay, Yvonne is the second. We are both seeing the same, um, the same, uh, uh deck. Uh, so, if anyone's curious, we do have, we do have emotes. We got some emotes. Got some Murphs you can spam in the chat. Pog is absolutely right.
I'm just sending this to my teammates. Yeah, Pog is an emote. It comes from Pog Champ, um, which is an expression of excitement. You know, it's like you're excited. Um, emotes, emotes, emotes are definitely a thing, right? I mean, they're, they're definitely a thing, right? They, they were a thing all the way back in like SQL, um, or like ICQ, right? They're, they've been, they've been, uh, they've been emotes have been since. Um, you are welcome. You are welcome, Kellos. So emotes have been around for a while. I even, you know, like Gen Xers should know what uh know what they're working with. And absolutely no prep for this. And I'm sure there will, that won't be a problem at all. I'm not saying it's the same quick draw. I'm just saying there was emotes there. All right, there were emotes in ICQ. Right, we had the had like the kissing emoji, like the weird, the really weird ones, but it existed. Wow, look at this deck. Double Nifflecon. What do I got? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Callus. You are you're a classic zoomer. Classic zoomer. Yeah. My other doppel is a 61. I might run that. It's pretty fun. Okay. Starting out strong with a gub. Don't even mind this. Um, I think we keep just for the the cycling. I think it's gonna be hard to hard to pass up a uh, something like something like that. Yo, no, really, really. That's. That's actually that's actually totally okay though, because we are about to exhume that that boy. Um Not even upset. Not actually that upset. It's more just funny. Yeah, statistically your chances theoretically are better but then also like sass also does weird sass gets weird when you get low right you have someone like this this gladiodontus is now you know king of the king of the castle here because i can't uh can't do anything against it that's also true quick draw that's also true i think the real thing we're learning is that sass is not the end-all be-all. Um, we are going to do this, and we're going to do that. We'll get Bingo Bang Bang down, and then we get Fire Spitter. Ah, uh, that's fair. Yep, that's fair. I also think, um, I don't know what it is. I always feels like for whatever high SAS deck I have, there is a better version of that high SAS deck. That's how it always feels. Yeah. So. There's a bit of, there's, a, there's an info there, Kellos. Basically how it works is there's an algorithm that you submit two decks to an algorithm 
and the algorithm generates 100 or it generates it generates a, a field of of um decks that are similar aerc characteristics they don't actually correlate r basically all the stuff on the spider chart here um all the stuff on the spider chart is what's getting modeled except for artifact control so you see how they're sort of scaled but more or less similar um that's what it's doing because the only thing, if you if you take if you take the R being out, not like an outlier, not worries. They very they're pretty similar spider charts. So that's what's happening. Um, and then while that's while that, that's happening, um, you have a hundred choices to choose from, and then you roll randomly. Um, uh, and then you roll randomly. Oh, maybe. Right, maybe. I mean, if you have an R-dependent deck, um, if you have an R-dependent deck, then um, you know it's it becomes um, not good. That seemed pretty good to me, though. I'll be honest. I ain't even I ain't even upset. Do they have any scaling R? No, scaling A. It's just so um, people can't bring like a. The reason they didn't do that was so people can't bring like a DAV deck or, you know, they, they can't bring. Um, Yeah, 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 absolutely. So we'll call this here. Um, we're gonna lash them. Uh, yeah, so I think we just reap. Um, we reap and we'll deal two damage with two splash. I want the Nifflekongs dead. Those will need to die. Well, we'll play the old Yurk on the left. Discard first blood and first blood and Uh, and so we'll do this, and we'll hit you, and we'll hit Bingle Bang Bang, and we'll lash. Um, if I'm being perfectly honest, this seems like a pretty high, high roll. Oh, you know what? This should have gone the right to activate Streak. Forgot to, uh, forgot to hit Streak. That's my bad. So I should have put I should have put I should have put old Yurk over here. And it's just fully on me. That's Gladiodontis down. Uh, we we have we have skyrocketed. Perfectly, we have skyrocketed out ahead in Amber. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they probably shouldn't stick around. So we'll forge blue, and I think we just we play Bramo. It's never over. 
until it's over. It was a wee bit of a high roll, I would say. I think we just play Brobnar. We deal Fire Spitter. Deal one damage, you could do with one splash, yeah. Can play that. Yeah, I play this. Yeah, see? There we go. And as long as this old Yurk lives, then we're gonna get Prince Derek value. And maybe we can get we can we can use Lollop to kill the uh, Giganticus, the Gladiodontist. You know, I'm not I'm not upset. Oh no, that, that'll kill it though. So, is it cards though, or is it is is Sir Derek cards or creatures? Creatures. No, no. Um. Yeah, I still think we just kill this. There we go. Creatures, absolutely more of us. Welcome. Welcome, more of us. And not just any creatures. We've got Barabnar creatures and Sanctum creatures. We got the cream of the AOA creatures right here. Yeah, I know. They're really annoying, actually. Like, this is, um,. Like this is like why are you so why are you so much stuff on you? Like why is this like look at <clears throat> like Prince Derek is a four one. Chow's a four two. Why on earth do you have a play exalt deal three damage and you're a six two? Like what is happening? Can anyone explain that to me? Okay, this has to be Not the apes. So that's 11. It's like, we just call it Brobnar. Whoa, this Sky Wizard Squadron is a Brobnar card. I didn't even register that. I didn't even register. So I think we call this here. Kill that one. We fight. We fight. Um, Forge Master Og. Goragans. Sky Booster Squadron. Um, they gotta have another Niffle though, right? No, they have another. It's coming. So the second Niffle is coming, but yeah, yeah, playing around Coward's End, nice, yeah. They're doing really well there. I would really love would really love um, 
That seems really weird. Why would you do that? Oh, exile. Interesting. That's not bad. You know, that's not bad at all. Um, here I think we're pretty cool, pretty cool to call Sanctum, though. Um. Yeah. Double house shield. We'll see if I can keep it up though. Uh, oh, okay, that's actually not bad. Not bad. Maybe we can exhume out Ortanu. Oh, that's actually good though. If I want to exhume out the Lollop. This the reap? No, it's not. Uh, Kalos, I, I don't know if you can see the bunny on stream. Okay, they are. They're not up here. They're down. They're down. They're on a different floor. I do really appreciate all the um. The playing around Coward's End. I think it's been phenomenal. But I think we just call Sarian. Not Sarian. <laughs> Lol. I wonder if it's worth exhuming something here, though. Exhume out a Sanctum card? Yeah. Probably. I can call dis. Can play streak. Then we can exhume out. Oh, actually, it's probably worth exhuming out Derek. And then we can lash them. Oh, awesome! Awesome quick draw. I've got um two white rabbits. They're um they're two years old. Right now, they are, uh, they are cuties. See, now this is where I want to play. This is, this is where I want to play Coward's End. This is going to be a good Coward's End right here. So we call Brobnar. Um, and we do this. Play Coward's End. With that on the left, and we play that. I think, I think that is worth the... I think that's might finally be worth holding the Coward's End this long. If they can just exalt... Yeah, I told them. See, I told them. I think we just have to call Dis. It's 
fight lose one, right? Because what we can do is I can... Yeah. So we trade? No, that's not worth it. Um, well, first we'll exhume out the Derek. We get a 10. It's probably worth Ortonuing here. This here. We reap. Um, is it worth fighting? Lose one. <sighs> they have left. I don't think they can take us off if we just keep here. Like, do they have a way to take GG? Interesting game. <laughs> Maybe at least for me. I don't know if that was an interesting game for them. Uh, it was a pretty high roll at the beginning. Um... Yeah, it is, that is quite the Untamed House. That is quite the Untamed House. Double is coming, Resurgence, all Nipple Apes, a Dew Fairy, and then double Niffle Kong. Like, that Untamed House is just doing the thing. Um, so, thank you all. Need that win. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. The Derek helped a lot. off the exhum. Absolutely. Okay, so we've at least we've at least got a win. I don't remember how yours um I'm sorry Jason, I don't remember how yours how yours ended up going. Um can uh You lost both, okay. Well This isn't our event, Jason. This is not our event. And that is okay. I will do poly D100. I rolled. It was a 71. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just got, you know, sometimes you just got high rolled. It's just, that's just how it be. Um, my, Siaka just got Siaka just got real high rolled, uh, really high rolled by me. Um, I will take. I will select judge. I will not die in vain. Oops. We can re-roll. My bad, I should have uh, should have said that before. We got Murph, Judge 71. Oh, this is so, okay. Whoo. Oh. Murph. Okay. The number 71. I get Tau, Shrift, 
Gal... Gal... Galerter de Fjords. Long live Swindle. How is Swindle Omega managed to get five ties? Witchcraft and wizardry. Quick draw. That is how. Oh, that is how. Oh, that is not what I get. I got this. I know. It does seem more than five wins. They have every single one of them has either. Well, they, it's, it hasn't been like right. It's been like three, three one. It's been like three one oh three. Um, it's just like it. They've all all they've done is tied. To be fair, all we we've mostly tied too. Our one win, um, we lost last week, but like our one win was a walkover. This has been this has been a brutal a brutal uh uh it's on record now, Jason. I can't uh it was uh nothing I can do about that. It is now for prosperity, no one is meant to know. I mean it's in the records. It's in the records. I'm not ashamed of it, I'll happily take a walk over. Oh, the Misaka made one. Perfect. <clears throat> this is a. I have to be also be fair. I've been having a really rough, little bit of key forge. Just in terms of luck. This season was not meant to me, Jason. We went really far in uh, the last one, so I was quite happy. You know, I was quite quite happy with how we uh, um, how we did in uh, ST three. So we'll just you know we'll use this. This is a break. Um, some more casual, some more some more casual STE format. <coughs> I didn't look at the doppel at all. Double Archimedes, no shark. That's good. Double Soldier of Brotherhood, doorstep. Okay, watch out for that. Cutthroat Research, watch out for that as well. Double Grey Rider, to watch out for. Got a Dust Chronicles. Okay. This looks like an AOA that could do stuff. Hmm. What do I play first? Kalos. Yes, I'm playing Christmas songs. I've been playing Christmas songs for my whole for all these streams. It's the season. It's December second. Get on board. It's not outrageous. We're literally in December. We've got 20... It's 23 days till Christmas. It's not outrageous. Get out of here. What do you want me to play? Hey. Okay. You can't you can't just complain without offering solutions. I will happily shuffle that back. See, the nice thing about being a streamer is that I can play music, I can play chat with my music choices all day long cuz it's my stream. They got no choice. Well, they have a choice. They have a choice. They have a choice to watch, but you listen to a certain OST. 
Original soundtracks are good. I have been really into dungeons since recently. Um, otherwise, I could put on. Um, here, we'll, we'll we'll change we'll change it all tomorrow. We'll change it. We'll see if this is any better. I will definitely have to change the. Your Ultimo now, I see. What a turn of events. Okay, that's actually pretty quiet. Hopefully that's better. It ended up in your Spotify wrapped. No director value for them. How'd you get that little niff back? Well, I mean, they're not really, they're not respecting, um... They're not respecting that, so... We will call Untamed. Uh, I will do that. And then we'll hit that. Hopefully this is better. And listen, just just keep your ears out for the bassoon. So I think we call Starlines here. <laughs> well, now we're listening to uh, Philip Glass. So everyone should be more than happy to l be listening to some Philip Glass. Much better. Boo. I, this is actually linked in um this is this is linked in the swindle group I am not booing Philip glass I am booing your your lack of faith in Christmas songs I love Philip glass actually huge shout out the only reason the, the only yeah it is it I can I can uh can pay I can tag you the only reason I know who this is to be perfectly honest I do not follow operas my um Uh, I guess that no, I, I can see the link. I can see the link. Um, after Swindle, after Stranger Things season four, they use this. They use this in it. Um, they use this in it, and it is. So this is they had they had a shadows reveal Chow discards that. Chaos portal.
So here we call Star Alliance, and we're just trying we're trying to keep this thing alive for a little bit. Oh, okay. This is we're just we're just drawing bangers. So the one we don't want to draw is uh, submersive yet. So put back submersive, and then Fila. Hope this isn't now too loud. Is this now too loud? No. My cheetah! That's pretty good. So good. Um, do that. Hit the Mobius scroll. This uh, uh, Akhenaten um, soundtrack is just too good. Yeah, I know. It's been a really good game. So we'll call Untamed, we'll get to Forge here. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it would be a GG. 100% a GG. This is Judge being Judge, man. You know what? You know what? Quick draw. That is. That is. That is actually. That's actually pretty fair. I probably should have taken that. We do call, um, we do call Untamed here. We take the archives, um, we play up a book and we just reap for that was their only scaling amber control, right? So we reap for one, two, three. So I think we just reap out. And if they have scaling A to get us off check, maybe? GG! That was a kind of wild game. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, it can be brutal. Clouds darken the sky. The stars rain down. <laughs> there, we, there we go. There we go. Quick draw. Get him. That's a good. That's a good one. Bones of the hellhounds tremble. The porters 
Yeah. But it can really gum up a key frog. Sometimes. Ironically. I mean, my favorite Windows of Appearances is just so good. There we go. Thank you to Siaka. Very well played. Uh, you know, definitely a high roll there in game one. Um, absolutely was a high roll in game one. Game two, uh, I think we hit we hit we hit some of the stuff we, we wanted to see. Um, I don't. I think they're pretty average, but good draws. They're good draws. You know, they're on like the they're on the good side of on the better side of okay. Super super high rolly. Um, Hitting, uh, we were, we, we were do this. Absolutely, Jason. Um, that Ortanu, the Ortanu, though, in game one was, ooh, that was something. That was something, all right. That was, uh, kind of brutal. But no, that was good. I think, um, I really like their doppel. I really enjoy, I, I, I would like, um, uh, I haven't played it yet, so I, I would actually like to talk about it a little bit, maybe. Um, and that would be my, hello? Oh, I know. This is the other doppel that I, I submitted, which is, oh, it's at 60. Um, quick try, I know you said you like, um, the uh, high sass, the high sass doppels. This is a really, really fun one. I opened this at a lo at locals. Um, I played it. I played it blind sealed um, against Archon decks. Is, is what I was end up playing. You know, people bring bring stuff to like local chain bound rather than um, sealed. It is really fun, really fun. Fifteen creatures, three plague rats, exhum. Um, everything in here is just. This is just fun. Uh, it's really fun. The the Witch of the Wilds here just makes everything really fun. It's got lots of um, it's got double glimmer and a nature's call. Um, so one of the things that it can do is it can do a glimmer call lock. It has no amber control. This thing cannot stop a key for the life of it. Um, what is it? It has 1.3. What is it? Lash? Yeah. It's, no, it doesn't have a lash. It has a library. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's got a pandemonium and a tentacus. And that is its um, A. But it has 18 pips. So in one cycle of the deck, it has enough, you know, it's got enough stuff in it to theoretically win the game. Um, and it actually has some really nice uh, efficiency in here. And the exhumes, the plague rats offer, offer pretty good C most of the time, especially because low creatures. Um, the glimmers can really get you into that nature's call lock uh, against your opponent, where like you. Um, you play Nature's Call, like you glimmer, you glimmer back the Nature's Call. You bounce two of your opponent's creatures. And you bounce your glimmer back to hand. The double glimmer makes this even easier to hit. Um, and then you know you just you sort of repeat, and eventually like you know, like if you're coming up their hand with like you know ones and creatures, it's it, it can be it can be, it can really bog down really bog down a, a deck. Uh, it can be good enough in deck like, that can be good enough in sealed to win games. Um, it can also be really nice because you can play, you can do it on it. You can with the Witch of the Wilds, you can do that on a non-untamed turn. So you can take your you can take your um, you can take your turn and be like okay, um, and still do the glimmer, still do the glimmer nature's call where you 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 nature's call afterwards. You bounce the glimmer, you bounce to there, it's back to hand. Very nice. It's a really 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 good um, just fun deck. Overall, really fun. I love AOAs like this where they got lots of recursion. Um, just sort of... Things keep coming back. You know? They keep coming back. So it's fun. 
If only Glimmer wasn't an alpha, am I right? But no, like the whistling darts get good value off stuff like the plague rats, because um, you know they can. The plague rats, uh, ironically, do a lot of work in this deck. So, I'm really a big fan of this deck. And part of me just wants to let to let this uh, tilt the windows of appearances play through a little bit. Hopefully, it's not too loud. It doesn't sound like it is. Listen to those horns. Man. So good. But anyways, yeah, that's, um, other than me listening to Philip Glass for a little bit, uh, that has been my, the key forge for today. We ended on a 2-0. Which we needed, absolutely needed. I won with mine. I won with the doppel. Let's go. Tied it up. And now it's on to Dave C. If Dave C can win theirs, or as long as he doesn't lose, as long as Dave C doesn't lose, we are uh, we are good to go. So no pressure, Dave. A little bit of pressure, not too much. Um, yeah, he's got to win. I mean, Dave, Dave's been Dave's been have bad luck in the doppels too. Like, it's not just it is not just like the scum, the Val's Rebel scum as an entity has had not good doppel luck. So our time is due. Yeah, for a two 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 record, we'll get there. We'll get there, Jason. But that is gonna be it for me. I don't. We might not make top cut, and that's honestly okay with by me. Wait, we will get top cut. Is that good enough for top cut? How do I? Well, yeah, let me, um, I'll bring up, this is what the, this is what the standings look like, um, this is what the standings look like before this, with Sloppy Lab Work coming out front, uh, Bullet Bills doing well, the Sloppier Lab Work is doing well, hey, Jupiter, how's it going? Welcome, thank you so much for the follow, really appreciate that, as always. Unfortunately, we are coming just to the end of the stream, sort of. I'm sort of going over the standings for the Swindle Team Events 4. Um, after a solid 2-0 two, uh, two for the Bowser Rebel Scum. So we're here, we're 16th. Do we, know if, do we know if it's top 16 top cut, Jason? I'm asking the team captain here. Because I think everyone below us has no wins. Okay, if it's a top 16 top cut, I think we make it. I am done for the day, Kalos, yeah. Or I will be, I will be soon. I will be soon. I'm a passive player this time, this this season, uh, Jason, so no worries about, no worries about that. Um, yeah, this will be my, this is the last thing. Hey, I... <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, every time I see this 005 from Omega, it's just, man, how? Omega is doing, putting in work. Hey, Jupiter. You can. Oh, you can hear me now. Okay, that's good. It is going well. The uh, Val's Rebel Scum took home a game. We are now currently. I lost, I got one mine, 2-0, uh, Jason lost, lost his 0-2, so now we're waiting for Dave C to, I'm going to replay the Windows Appearance, that is just too, too good a song. 
Um, now we're just waiting on Dave C's result, which hopefully... I, if they get if they get six draws as a record, that'll be incredible. That'll be incredible. That deserves a... Yeah, this is a team league. Uh, this is Swindle, Swindle, Swindle Team Events. And I will actually... probably need to update this command, but... Um, Yeah, yeah, so that's the uh, that that command Jupiter is um, info for the league. The link there is to the uh, to like the description of the format. Basically, how the how it works is you have three people, three people on a team. Um, each player submits two decks um, using an algorithm. They generate a list of decks that match the A A E R C curves. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries at all, at all, Jupiter. Um, so basically, they match the AERC curves. Um, so basically, everything besides artifact control in the, in what's in the spider chart. So you can see this is so Yvonne is uh, Siaka's Siaka's submission. Gothic is the doppel that I played. So you can see if we look at the if we go between the spider charts, you can see that if we as long, if we ignore R, the scaling of the of the scaling of the spider chart is more or less the same. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree too. So AERC is the scores that it and it, and it generates a hundred a hundred decks that are as close as possible to your doppel. So basically, decks that should be doing all the same things, AE, not RC wise. Um, and it it has generated some really really interesting matches heard I was going to help you record an episode for the tavern soon oh maybe Jupiter maybe I think um, I know you may you might have better ears than I do um, but if, if I am that is very exciting and I, I look I look forward to it and hopefully chat looks forward to it as well um, but no that's how the um, <laughs> persuasive means exactly um but that's how doppels work and so basically how it works is um you each player plays a best of two match or yeah they play best of two match so you play uh one match with your deck against a randomly rolled out of the 100 doppels match your opponent your opponent plays the doppel and then you swap so your opponent plays their deck and you play the doppel of their deck. And so scoring works that if you win both games, it's a win. Otherwise, it's a tie. And then you, you're, you're assigned points, or you know, you're assigned wins as we see this ranking here. Um, this point system is giving us uh, wins, losses, ties. So Val's Robo Scum, we've won once, we've lost twice, and we've tied twice. Um, Swindle Omega has somehow tied five times. That's right. That's right. If you so, and then the scoring is three, one, or zero. Right? Is that right, Jason? So a win is worth three points. A tie is worth one, and a loss is worth zero. One and one. That's right. Yeah. If it's a tie, both teams get one point. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So both teams get get one point and a tie, and then that way, um, you know, you're incentivized to win the the um, the match by a fair by a, not a small margin, not a small margin at all. So we've got we've got very interesting um, stuff. I think it was trying to find. Um, Trying to actually find decks that you think are going to win against decks that are supposed to be exactly symmetrical to them, I think has been a very, or what Sass thinks is exactly symmetrical to them, has been a very interesting exercise. And how that's panned out over, you know, all the teams has been such a fun thing to you know to keep a little bit of a pulse on <clears throat> like watching the sloppy lab work games um like the one against um 
the one who gets quick, quick draw against JT Russell was just that was <laughs> that was so brutal. Ah uh, man, adaptive is great. Yeah, I love adaptive. Uh, Why well, run Kagi? So uh, it makes sense. Um, I'm a big adaptive fan. I, that's why Karen. That's why Karen and I have been playing adaptive on our streams. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just fun. It's also it's the most fun. It's one of the most fun casual ways to play the game. Um, right? It's like three games. Um, you know, you're playing different decks. It's just fun. Just a good time. Yeah, I think adaptive is the best skill testing. Um, or it, it it does the best job of removing player skill from the equation when we talk about a game specifically. Completely agree there. Yeah, I know like it's a, it's a it is a hard skill to be able to just pick up a new deck and try and you know on the fly realize and play into it um, strengths and its strategies and sort of you know under have a, a feel for how to pilot the deck right off the gate, which is why I like adaptive like standard adaptive where like you each play you play archon then reversal. I don't, people, there's people who like um, Reversal than Archon, but like, I, I think um, it's the most fair to have each player have the maximum possible knowledge before chain bidding and before the second game. So the for what's certainly seen that way. Yeah, 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 certainly. I mean, the nice thing about the nice thing about the doppelganger event is that theoretically, theoretically, it doesn't matter how it doesn't matter what deck you put in, because the algorithm actually does a fairly good job of not... of sort of matching the deck. Like, if you put in, if you put in, a, like a, if you put in a banger, you are gonna get a banger. Um, if you put in a really high speed DAV deck, you're gonna find, you're gonna be put up against high speed, high creature count decks. Um, you know, so there will be dab there probably will be dabs in there. Um, so I think it's a, it's actually been a, it's been a very fun, uh, very fun exercise. Before we go, can you talk chess clocks? <laughs> the um, so there's an algorithm. Yeah, there's an algorithm that the um, Karen and a team have developed that that you know generates the list of doppels so it analyzes the deck it searches through the dok of database and then it finds the matches so that part's all automated and then you just um <laughs> yeah um well i well jason i i am in i i don't know if you've read through the sync i i was i've been reading through it but um um I think for like high level Keyforge, it's um, it's fine. For like stuff like this, you know, I'm, I'm I'd rather play with no time. I'd rather play with no timer. For most Keyforge, I'd rather play with no timer. Period. Um, so, but for stuff like where where time is is needed in a in a time is needed, like you know, Swiss whatever tournaments, um, for high level high level games, sure. Chess clocks, go for it. I think that'd be. I'd like to try it. I think it's. I think it's probably fine. Um, I think there's good arguments for them. I think Keyforge is a card game where it actually you can implement them. Uh, most card games you are unable to to the very to the very nature of priority passing, which exists in a lot of them. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it in Flesh and Blood, right? Because that's just that wouldn't work. Um, like a 45 second channel. Maybe. I mean, you're not really. You're getting like. If if let's say the average let's say the average game lasts twelve turns with a forty five second turn limit, we've no like, even a one li if we have a one minute turn limit per player, then well, the problem with turn the problem with turn limits that I have is that I don't I think they're an adequate way of policing roping in something like an online game. Um, well that's just a chess clock then Jupiter. Because I think the the 
the thing that's nice about a chess clock, um, uh, I'll just say, the thing that's nice about a chess clock is that if you have time increments, right, if you're playing, um, depending on what you want to do, right, I mean, you could, you could play bullet chess, um, Well, it depends, right? I mean, if you set the, if you set the, if you set the time limit as, um, you, you can have time advantage or time advantage, right? Um, so like, you know, you can also turn off at time, additional time, right? We, we could, we could have no additional time on this chess clock, um, where, you know, everyone, everyone just gets 20 minutes. You know, you play, you play through the round. The round should never go over 40 minutes. Um, so I th I think the a set time per turn just pun only punishes end game state end game board board game states. Yeah, which does sound like a good podcast. Um, but no, it, it chess clock the per time turn limits turn time limits punish end complicated end states. Um, whereas chess clocks reward simple game state play being fast to allow you to have more time to be in the tank for complicated turns um which is why you see in chess right, right people people going through openers it's fast right it's it's they're playing they're playing really 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 fast it's all it's more or less known pre-open information i don't do that because i am not a not that good a chess player but like you know they they bought they blast through the first five turns um because they can and then they save that time for turns where they're surprised so I'm not a fan of turn time limits just because of uh, what it does in, in end end game. Um. Shuffling decks is always the issue. Yeah, shuffling decks is always an issue. Yeah, that's the card no, nature of the card game. But no priority, no no priority passing at least makes it a bit easier in Keyforge. But I think that's going to be it for me. That is going to be all the chess clock discussion for today. Um, I'm sorry you're just joining us at the end, Jupiter. That is my apologies. But I do have to go and do work for the day, as I still have work to do. So, thank you everyone for coming out. Happy I got the, uh, oh, very nice. Awesome. I hear the Abra is going well, coming to the close, coming to a close soon, but I hear the season's been going well for over in the Ancient Bear Republic. Um, glad we got the, glad we got a dub for Thousand Will Scum. Happy to put that one in the books. And, uh, yeah, very nice. Very nice. I think ABR is a great casual league. I, re I really do. I think uh, in terms of casual leagues, the best ones that are possibly out there is Random Access Archives on the Miner server, and um, well, Kagi, and ABR. So, I will see everyone everyone later. See you, Jason. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for chatting. And thank you so much. I will see you all later. See you next time. Peace. If you haven't, we have reached affiliate, so we do have emotes. See you, everyone. <laughs>